The common belief today is that Christianity has been a hindrance to progress and prevents us from becoming a more educated and enlightened society. This is how Christians are often betrayed in the media and films. But how much truth is there in this? In reality, very little. The reason the world is more educated, healthy, and prosperous has a lot to do with Christianity, and specifically, Christian missionaries, who have been crucial for building a better world. Christianity, through missions and charity work, has made the world a much better place, and scientific research can verify this. Over a century ago, Max Weber came up with the idea of the Protestant work ethic. This is basically the idea that Protestantism encouraged discipline, diligence, and frugality, which led to more economic progress and therefore more prosperity. This was allegedly the reason Protestant regions of Europe became more prosperous and quickly outperformed their Catholic, Orthodox, and Islamic neighbors. Although one can argue Christianity does encourage virtues like discipline and diligence, more recent research has challenged the idea that prosperity in Protestant nations specifically came from the concept of the Protestant work ethic, and instead came from Martin Luther's demand that all Christians must read the Bible. When Luther began the Reformation, one of his concerns was the surprising lack of literacy among Christians. Most Christians did not even know what was in the Bible. Luther explicitly favored universal schools for boys and girls, so people could be literate and read God's word for themselves. Above all, the foremost and most general subject of study, both in the higher and the lower schools, should be the Holy Scriptures, and for the young boys the Gospel. And would to God that every town had a girls' school also, in which the girls were taught the Gospel for an hour each day. Combining this new Protestant motive with the recent invention of the printing press, literacy throughout Protestant Europe skyrocketed. But this had an unintended effect. While the Ottoman Empire was banning the use of the printing press, higher literacy rates in Europe led to more economic development, productivity, and prosperity. Luther's reforms increased literacy across Protestant regions, which stemmed from his desire for all to read the Bible. To quote from the study, the increased education of Protestants was purely religiously motivated in its instrumental function for the dissemination of the gospel. Thus, Roop states quite clearly that Luther's prime concern in this area was the creation of elementary schools for the people as a means of providing all Christians with access to the Word of God, as contained in the Bible. We conclude that all our qualitative results are robust to controlling for a variety of geographical influences economic outcomes and literacy are both significantly higher in Protestant countries, but Protestantism had no significant association with economic outcomes beyond the one due to literacy. What is also interesting is the study authors found that when Catholic regions adopted this urgency to increase literacy, the same positive results in economic success were found. Robert Woodbury notes when Protestants began to utilize the printing press to spread literacy to teach their Christian message, it forced Catholics to retaliate by also printing more educational material to combat arguments from Protestants. In order to win more converts, Protestants and Catholics began to educate more and more people, which had the unintended effect of raising literacy rates in Christian regions, which led to more prosperity and growth. This educational growth was not limited to Europe. Convicted by the command of Jesus to make disciples of all nations, both Protestant and Catholic Christians sent missionaries out to Africa, the Americas, Australia, and Asia. One study looked at the effects of missionary activity in India. It found the exposure to Protestant missions during the colonial period translates into higher literacy rates today. Historians highlight the important role of Protestant missionaries in promoting literacy among traditionally disadvantaged groups in India, women in low castes. Consistently, I find that women in low caste members living in Protestant districts display significantly higher literacy rates relative to the same social groups living in non-Protestant areas. At the turn of the 19th century, nearly 70% of primary and secondary schools in the provinces of Agra and Aude were missionary-run. 
The study suggests Protestant missionaries change cultural norms to favor the needs for boys and girls to be educated. Female education was also boosted in regions where Protestantism had more influence, and this transformed into positive results that are still seen today. On average, regions that had a Protestant mission are associated with a 2.5% increase in the total population literacy rate. Protestants also detested the caste system of India and believed it was a Christian's responsibility to undermine it. So Protestants used education as a weapon against the caste system. Education in particular is used as an invaluable weapon in the fight against castes. There is the belief that Christian schools cannot recognize or tolerate caste observance within their walls. The Protestant stance is that education must be accessible to all. Some have attempted to argue this is only correlative. Higher literacy rates and better education could actually have come from influence from Western civilization and not directly from missionary work. But another study looked at this and found that Christian missionary activity is consistently associated with better female education outcomes as measured by differences in education between men and women in the colonial period. It also continues to affect post-colonial variation in female education. These effects hold when we include the usual controls of direct British rule, modernization, European settlement, education expenditures, and post-colonial democracy, as well as those specifically employed in studies of India, such as Islam, caste and tribal status, and land tenure. Interestingly, we also find that direct British rule is not consistently associated with better female education outcomes. Furthermore, it has had a deleterious effect on gender equality and post-colonial education at some levels of schooling. In other words, European colonialism and Western influence was not found to be positively associated with better education. The effects are directly tied to missionary activity and not mere European influence. The study found that Christian missionary activity is consistently associated with better female education outcomes in both the colonial and post-colonial periods. Despite facing native resistance, missionaries worked tirelessly to educate girls alongside boys. By 1931, Christians in India surpassed Sikh, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, and tribal communities in overall literacy. Muslims had on average 15 per 1,000 literate girls. Hindus had 21 per 1,000. Christians dwarfed these numbers by having 203 per 1,000 literate girls. Colonial censuses indicate that where Protestants had been active, there were superior female education outcomes. Protestant schools didn't just teach religion, they also taught non-religious subjects like arithmetic, writing, and reading, and they enrolled lower caste and upper caste Hindus, Muslims, and Christians. But among Protestant Christians, cases of relapse into illiteracy after puberty were much lower than adherents of other faiths, due to church practice and vernacular Bible recitation. By teaching the importance of reading the Bible, Protestant men and women maintained their reading and writing skills. Christianity also gave members of the lower caste a bargaining chip. If a group failed to win new rights and shares in a locality's ranking schemes as Hindus, they could convert to Christianity, restage their campaign for new honors, and hope to win on the next round. Thus, even when people did not convert to Christianity, the presence of Christian missionaries still increased the quality of life for others. We find that colonial era Christianity still explains a decline in the educational gender gap across all educational levels, even when contemporary Christianity and educational expenditure that work in reducing this gap is taken into account. As in the earlier set of post-colonial period models, educational expenditure has a stronger impact than both measures of Christianity, with colonial era Christianity having a more pronounced effect on this gap than its current counterpart does. Islam, colonial status, caste and tribe have no consistent or statistically significant effects on this gap. Similar results were found in studies that looked at Africa. Robert Woodbury says Protestants were a crucial catalyst for the development and spread of mass education, mass printing and newspapers. Contemporary education is higher in regions that are closer to missions that imported a printing press for distributing educational material. 
Protestant printing presses in Africa, not only publish Christian texts, but also other sorts of written material, like newspapers in indigenous languages. Study authors noted this resulted in higher well-being and higher economic activity. The evidence we obtain from a variety of identification strategies is consistent with our hypothesis that the earlier introduction of the printing press has long-term effects on contemporary civic and social capital. A wide literature points to higher social capital, leading to higher economic activity and higher well-being. Another study found that Christian missionaries were central agents in the development of the educational systems in former African colonies. In most former colonies, the first schools were founded by missionaries. In fact, 90% of Western education in Sub-Saharan Africa was provided by missionaries. This was due to the fact that missionaries believed the best way to make converts was by providing schooling. And also, missionaries believed it was necessary for believers to read the Bible for themselves. Protestants initiated this educational growth in Africa. When Catholics saw this, they began to compete for converts by creating their own schools for the indigenous populations. Magnus Basie noted Catholic and Protestant missionaries often competed with one another to gain more students. This was done by increasing the quality of the schooling and initiating innovations for better education. We must recognize that humans are naturally competitive. When channeled in the wrong way, this has historically led to harm and chaos. Human history is filled with warfare, conquest, and pillaging. However, Christianity has been able to channel humanity's natural competitiveness to increase the quality of lives for many. Catholics and Protestants competed for converts and did so by offering better education. In areas where Catholic missionaries faced direct competition from Protestant missionaries, and had to compete for students, Catholic missionaries were innovative and pushed for the same aspects that were absent in their work in Catholic countries. Protestant missionaries seem to have been more productive than their Catholic counterparts in countries with protections in favor of Catholic missionaries, and Catholic missionaries were at least as active and innovative as their Protestant counterparts regarding education in places where they did not have state protection and support. This led to more literacy and better education for Africans from both Protestants and Catholics. Similar results were found in Latin America, where Protestants and Catholics created more educational opportunities and better quality of life in order to win over more converts. And another study found that in specific African regions before 1960, the odds of a Christian being literate rather than illiterate is nine times higher than for a non-Christian. After 1960, it was only four times more likely. Islamicized regions were hostile to missionary activity and prevented missionaries from building schools. Thus, in places like West Africa, education tended to decrease due to historic Islamic control. In contrast, in the region of the Gold Coast, 90% of students were enrolled in mission schools, which led to higher educational achievement. Missionaries were driven by their need to win more converts and did this by increasing the quality of education to attract more people. So Christianity's Great Commission has inadvertently led to an increase in education. But research has also revealed missionary work also increased the health and quality of life for indigenous people. One study noted that in India, closer proximity to a Protestant medical facility indicated healthier outcomes and more hygiene habits among the locals. Our measures of hygiene, preventative care, and health knowledge are significantly associated with the distance from a Protestant medical mission. In particular, living far from a village historically equipped with a Protestant medical mission decreases the probability of treating water, and it increases the probability of practicing open defecation. Moreover, distance from a Protestant medical mission is associated with a lower knowledge of the early signs of pneumonia. The closer to a Protestant medical mission, the better the practices related to maternal and child health. We find that proximity to a historical medical facility increases women's probability of taking iron supplements while pregnant, of receiving a full antenatal checkup, and having a safe delivery. Finally, it increases children's probability of receiving a medical checkup within 24 hours since birth. Another study with robust results found that Christianity has a positive effect on infant health in India. 
When Christian infants were compared to Muslim and Hindu infants, Christian infants had healthier birth weights and higher heights. This was especially true for girls. The paper explains that the vegetarian diet of Hindus and Muslim religious requirements of avoiding pork and fasting during Ramadan may be linked to less optimal health outcomes for children under the age of three when compared to Christian children. Pigs are a cheaper source of meat that are easier to manage than other livestock. They require less feed, less space, less time to mature than cattle or other livestock, and therefore, historically have provided sustenance to larger populations when little food was available. Christianity allows for one to consume pork, which has been helpful for the underprivileged that need meat for nutrients. The study demonstrated the medical and dietary habits of Christians resulted in better health outcomes for infants, especially girls. But also, health in early childhood before age two is considered to be one of the best predictors of adult earnings, well-being, and skill formation. Thus, Christian dietary freedom and medical habits have been shown to lead to better results. Additionally, the study notes, access to medicine meant that death rates for children were lowest in Christian families. There is also evidence that consumption of alcohol and drugs, as well as things such as gambling and child marriage, decreased in areas where Christianity spread its influence, and that literacy rates among children were higher in families who converted to Christianity. In terms of women-specific characteristics, Muslim women are less likely to seek prenatal or antenatal care and have earlier first births as compared to upper caste Hindus and Christian women. Average age at first marriage is very young, about 16 years, and youngest among lower caste Hindu and Muslim women. Alternatively, average age at first marriage is closer to 20 years for Christian women. Literacy rates are lowest among low caste Hindu women and highest among Christian women. Thus, the changes in India with the influx of Protestant missionaries allowed us to compare the effects of Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism. In all measures, Christianity outperformed the others and led to more education, literacy, and healthier outcomes. Using historical records from British India and earlier, we demonstrate that these patterns are plausibly tied to the legacy of the advent and spread of Christianity, where Christian teachings that emphasize egalitarian principles that stress the importance of basic health, hygiene, and sanitation are found to have long-term implications on child health today. Our results are robust to a wide series of specification checks, and we offer an explanation for why Christian girls in particular benefited. Similar results were found in China. Our investigation of historical facts and our empirical tests suggest that a greater Protestant presence resulted in better education and healthcare outcomes in 1920, and that these effects persisted into the present and contributed to economic growth in 2000. Missionaries imported Western technology and helped local people build modern medical and educational systems. They worked to control disease, aid in disaster relief, and establish hospitals. This accelerated modernization in many Chinese regions that ultimately led to economic progress, a healthier and educated population, and the reshaping of local values. When Christianity was again legalized in 1978, the suppressed effects of Protestantism revived rapidly and began to persistently contribute to improvements in economic growth, education, and healthcare outcomes. Similar results were found in another study on China. Protestantism promoted economic prosperity in China by building hospitals and schools, introducing Western medicine, and aiding the Chinese people in multiple ways. Robert Woodbury also notes missionaries were crucial for ending colonial abuses and injustices. To reach their religious goals, non-state missionaries punished abusive colonial officials and counterbalanced white settlers, which fostered the rule of law, encouraged less violent repression of anti-colonial political organization, and facilitated peaceful decolonization. Christians were also crucial for ending harmful indigenous practices, such as foot binding, female genital cutting, widow burning, and child marriage. Other research demonstrates that Christians ended indigenous practices around the world where teenage boys and girls were used for ritual sex. Missionaries initiated reforms that protected children from generational sexual abuse. 
Robert Woodbury's sociological model, found that Protestant missionaries were crucial catalysts for initiating the development and spread of religious liberty, mass education, mass printing, newspapers, voluntary organizations, and colonial reforms, thereby creating the conditions that made stable democracy more likely. Essentially, Missionaries were so determined to spread the gospel, they created many services and reforms for indigenous populations. This indirectly led to more education, literacy, economic prosperity, the advancement of human rights, and colonial reforms. This in turn led to more democracy and freedom for people across the globe. To spread the gospel, missionaries created better living conditions in multiple ways, directly and indirectly. There is no doubt that research indicates Democratic states are beneficial in multiple ways. But due to the tireless work of missionaries, more states today are democratic, and this has led to better living conditions and more freedom for people across the globe. Statistical analysis suggests that Protestant missions are strongly and robustly associated with democracy. In fact, missions seem to explain about half the variation in democracy outside Europe and survive dozens of controls and robustness checks. More concretely, the cumulative correlation between Protestant missions and democracy is 0.707. Roll into Salem's model, compared Protestantism, Catholicism, and Islam. He found that nations with higher Protestant populations have more voice and accountability in government, citizen empowerment, political stability, non-governmental organizational membership, and have the ability to create beneficial political transformation. Catholicism was positively associated with citizen empowerment, higher levels of non-governmental organizational membership, and political transformation. Islam wasn't positively associated with any of these benefits. We find evidence that Protestantism is correlated with strengthening democratic politics, specifically in ensuring that basic freedoms are preserved, that political stability is guaranteed, that civil society provides the basic infrastructure for a pluralistic society to grow, and for authoritarian forces in the government to be checked and held accountable. The Catholic Church also became instrumental in promoting human rights, speaking out against social injustice, and becoming active agents in the preservation of religious freedom. Daniel Treisman's research also concluded that Protestantism plays a role in monitoring and denouncing state officials, is associated with lower corruption, and helping establish a pronounced distinction between church and state. Lipset and Lentz concluded that Protestantism reduces corruption, in part because of its association with individualistic, non-familistic relations. Robert Greer found that Protestantism is associated with real GDP growth, economic development, and higher per capita income levels. The Catholic Church has also been instrumental in advancing human rights, as John Witt Jr. said. New democratic and human rights movements in Brazil, Chile, Central America, the Philippines, South Korea, Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic, Ukraine, and elsewhere owe much of their inspiration to the teachings and activity of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has thus come full circle. The Catholic Church led to the first human rights movements of the West at the opening of the second millennium. It is leading the Universal Church's next human rights movement of the world in this opening of the third millennium. There is no denying that multiple studies have found that Christian missionary activity has made the world a much better place. We find more education, literacy, hospitals, hygiene habits, better health, nutrition, medical care, economic progress, freedom, democratic values, higher quality of life, human rights, political stability, voice and accountability, and citizen empowerment. And we also see that Christianity has led to less corruption, disease, child sexual abuse, female inequality, child marriage, authoritarianism, and other harmful practices. Moreover, these effects flow directly from a central teaching of Christianity to spread the gospel to all nations. These things are not just associated with Christianity by coincidence. The command of Christ to spread the gospel has directly and indirectly led to these results. As John Witt Jr. said, the Bible is filled with critical passages that have long inspired deep theological insights into the nature of rights. And this is the tip of the iceberg of the research that shows positive results from Christianity. As I've demonstrated in other videos, Christianity has been extremely beneficial for humanity. Without Christianity, we would not be as advanced 
educated and moral as we are today. Before wrapping up, we do need to note that not all missionary activity has necessarily been beneficial. One study compared Protestant missionary activity in Guatemala and Korea. It found that in Korea, Protestants created benefits like they typically have in other regions by building schools, churches, and medical facilities. But in Guatemala, the majority of missionaries were evangelical and Pentecostal and were driven by premillennialist beliefs in the imminent return of Christ. Since they believed the world was ending soon, they invested little in improving the lives of the local inhabitants. The infection of end times hysteria back in the 1920s prevented them from building a better world as missionaries have elsewhere. So there's no doubt Christian missionary work can be tainted by other factors that prevent missionaries from creating positive results and has at times even worked against the needs of the local inhabitants. But overall, Christian missionary work has been an obvious net positive for humanity and directly flows from the Christian doctrine of the Great Commission. So the idea Christianity is harmful and holds back progress is one of the greatest lies we've been fed in modern times. The world is so much better because of Christianity. And if you want humanity to continue to advance and become more educated and healthy, you should encourage the spread and growth of Christianity. Most of the good we have in the world today is because of one man who died for all and then launched the greatest revolution the world has ever seen. More Christianity means a better world for all and this is backed by science. <laughs>